Hello. What's up? Let's learn a hardcore secret of lenses. I promise this will be re rewarding to you if you watch it and you give a damn about photography. If you think this is boring, it could be my personality, but if you don't care about this topic, then I kind of deny that you really have a hardcore interest in photography. I deny it. There have been like a bazillion people buy, for example, the 135mm f2.8 Nikkor, that old lens, that old magnifocus lens, and they're like, oh damn, I have some of these expensive zoom lenses, and man, this thing just rocks. I can't put my finger on what the hell it is, but it rocks. It's like, invariable. That lens has got some decent chromatic aberration. It's uh, even a little bit magenta shifted. Okay, so why are so many people... Well, they love it because you said it's awesome. No, that ain't it. People are critical. They jump all over me. If they, they bought the lens, like, this lens sucks, you're an idiot, you know? I don't know why I bought this lens off your recommendation. They don't say that, they say just the opposite. What is a hardcore secret of lenses, and why are all these lens manufacturers, most of them anyway, screwing up? Well, really, all of them are now. This is because they are listening to their customers. It's like, well, you know, the customer's always right. Yeah, not really, no. There's no such thing as truth by consensus. Here's a hardcore fact of what every lens company do is doing wrong, okay? Uh, this is the three things that every customer is bitching about that they want. Resolution, well, no one wants an unsharp lens. Okay, I got that. Chromatic aberration. Well, I don't like chromatic aberration. I don't like that purple fringing. You know, I don't like that green or purple. Okay, you don't like it, I'm going to tell you what it is in a minute. Corner to corner sharpness and vignetting. Every lens, I've got more lens experience than everybody else on YouTube. You think that's egotistical? Fine, kiss my ass. It's still the truth. Still the truth! Let's arrive at a point here of understanding and comprehension. If a lens can talk to you, and uh, the, by the way, the old uh, Zeiss planars and distagons, which, Nike, which is uh, Zeiss is kind of phasing out, replacing with that Milvis crap, uh, because they also want to sell it to videographers, and videographers don't like chromatic aberration. And, uh, you know, they want awesome resolution, and they want perfect corner to corner. I understand that. If a lens can talk to you, it would tell you one thing. You just speak perfect truth, you know, be full of wisdom. And that would be is that, and you better listen to this too, chromatic aberration is depth. Uh, see, people don't view pictures. Let me grab them here. People don't view pictures... Uh, you know, it's like you take a picture of a white flower against a dark background or something. People don't view pictures and, like, put on special, you know, like the red and green glasses for, like, uh, 3D movies. People don't put on, like, uh, purple and green uh, 3D glasses to look at a two-dimensional printout, right? But that is the lens screaming at you that it is doing a insanely good job of rendering depth. Chromatic aberration is depth. You got that? People don't like that. I know that. The three things that people have been screaming for from these lens companies is resolution, no more, no more chromatic aberration, and perfect corner-to-corner -corner vignetting. Here is another fact, and this is irrefutable. You see this old lens here? This lens has been around for a long time. Nikon still makes it. You know some other old lenses with low element count that have a good bit of chromatic aberration? Uh, 50 millimeter manual. Nikon still makes some old timey um, lenses. 50 millimeter, 35 millimeter F2 D series autofocus. Um, the uh, designs on the 105 millimeter F2 DC Nikkor. The 135 millimeter. The hardcore, the 85 millimeter, the old uh, D series autofocus 85 millimeter portraiture lenses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. 30, 50. 35, 50, 85, 100, 135. Those are also part of the Magic 7 that I told you about in the prior video. The hardcore professionals will not let Nikon update those lenses. You know why? Because there's nothing to update. Every lens is a trade-off in design. You see this lens right here? It's got 23 glass elements in it. Oh. Glass is evil. It butchers the light. Okay? Phase shift is something that is natural. I mean, it is purely as uh, natural as uh, granola munching a hippie, you know, uh, sniffing or homegrown watermelons or something like that. You know, it's perfectly natural. Chromatic aberration is depth. 
Zeiss is the most expensive and best lenses that will blow the piss out of every current modern lens, like the Distagon 35mm f2, 100mm Zeiss. is like, those lenses got bad chromatic aberration. In certain situations, they do. 35mm f1.4. Those lenses are the tits, too. Um, they're irreplaceable. Every lens is a trade-off. You can butcher all of these lenses. This lens is a butchered version by Tamron of this lens. Not really, but essentially. They removed the chromatic aberration. Forget about the autofocus speed, okay? They removed the chromatic aberration. They made it sharper, less vignetting, uh, better corner-to-corner -corner sharpness. Those are all good things. But the professionals know better. The professionals that have used a lot of lenses, and there really aren't that many. Uh, professionals, most professionals have not used ooh, a lot of lenses. They haven't. That's a fact, too. They, they just haven't. This is a butchered version of this in one form or another. This makes people have, forget about the autofocus speed. The customer is not always right. There are some hardcore people that within the inner sanctums of Zeiss and Nikon that uh, some of these old farts that are retiring and what they've done is they've been replaced by computer CAD programs. Yeah. And the whippersnappers are redesigning lenses based upon what the customers want and the computer program. Refractive index, type it in. A lens is always more than the sum of its parts. But there's still a lot of hardcore pros out there that will not let Nikon stop making these old-time, low-element count prime lenses because these lenses are just the, they're just the shiznit. They're, they're awesome. They're irreplaceable. They're perfect. Well, they're not perfect. I said every lens is a trade-off. Yeah, but you forgot. Chromatic aberration, while we humans don't want to see it, that is depth. That is the lens actually showing you a three-dimensional, like you go to a 3D movie without the glasses. You go to a 3D movie and you don't have your glasses on, the movie looks like crap, doesn't it? Yaw. Yeah. You gotta put the glasses on, right? Well, these lenses do the same thing. You know, nobody wants to, you know, nobody's gonna put on glasses to look at a, at a really hardcore depth image, are they? No. I just want to look at it with their normal eyeballs. That's right, but that chromatic aberration is depth. No, it's the starshin. It's a, you know, it's a, uh, you don't understand light. You don't understand light. That is a perfect lens rendering a perfect image, which has natural depth. The only way that lens can project a two-dimensional version of that three-dimensional depth is by that fringing. That is depth. You know, that is irrefutable. Chromatic aberration is depth. But you can eliminate it by sticking a crap load of glass in a, in a lens like this. Yeah, that causes other issues. Causes washed out color saturation. Causes a poor depth rendition. You know, it's like taking a filet mignon and sending it to, It's like, well, that's perfect. You send it through a McDonald's processor, and then another one, and another one. He's like, well, it's exactly the same. No. A uh, huge portion of its qualities have changed. That's like saying you can take a, a Fabergé egg and hit it with a hammer a dozen times, it'll still be... It's like, well, yeah, it's still a Fabergé egg, except now it's a worthless pile of crap. It's the same thing. How much of this... Every lens is like a radio antenna. You know, what do you think light is? You know, light is a coaxial electrical circuit. Every lens is like an antenna. Okay? If you want the signal to be perfectly sharp, that's one thing. If you want it to be uh, have great fidelity, you know, to show and render depth and color saturation properly, you can't overdo it. You can't process it over and over and over again by element after element after element after element after. Element after element. This is why what the customer wants ain't always right. All these lens manufacturers are listening to these damn customers, and what some of these lens companies should do is they should make a video saying. Listen, we got some hardcore pros back here that have been making lenses. They're about to retire. They're like 60 years old, and they say you're full of shit. These guys know more than you do, the customer. And they're saying that every lens is a trade-off in design, and that, uh, you know, if you want supreme resolution, you know, okay, but you're going you're gonna to lose all the rest of this awesome stuff. All these people are buying these old prime lenses that used to be made really simply, you know, they're like, oh damn, you know, why don't, why doesn't my expensive zoom lens look like that? 
You know, why? It's, you know, this... And here's another piece of crap. This pisses me off. People say, also lenses can't match the resolution of a high megapixel sensor. Well, that is BS. You know, you could stick... I've done it a thousand times. You stick these old uh, 30-year-old lenses on a Nikon D810 at 36 megapixels. I mean, it'll just beat the piss out of that 36 megapixel uh, camera sensor. I mean, it, you know, it'll knock it in the ass. You don't give me that crap that we need modern lenses for high megapixel sensors. Well, yeah, we want to talk about corner to corner and vignetting. Yeah, okay, let's talk about that. Why don't you just trade off every awesome attribute of these old lenses just so you could have perfect corner to corner. No vignetting. Everything is a trade-off. And if you're a connoisseur of fine image projection, you can crop that image, you know? Crop it. Crop it, dumbass. Okay? Because what's more important than that is color saturation, micro-contrast, uh, depth rendition, perceived depth. Uh, all that stuff's important, you know? But no, customers say resolution, chromatic aberration, and perfect corner-to-corner. Customers are usually never right. They think they know what they want, but they really don't know what they want. I like my filet mignon processed a hundred times so it digests easily. No, how about I make a filet mignon, because only a filet mignon. No, no, I want you to send it through the processor. You know, I want it to be processed. It's like making baby food. You know, all baby food that uh, kind of looks like uh, poop in a jar. You know, that's what these camera manufacturers are doing. They're making baby food. It's like, how do you feed a filet mignon to a mental midget, a little baby? Wah. Well, we're going to puree it, puree it until it turns into liquid and the baby could eat it that way. Well, you know, that's fine for the babies, i.e. the dumbasses. But I think I'll just actually whip out the filet mignon in a knife and, you know, eat a traditional filet mignon, you know, the way it was meant to be eaten. So, wise up. Understand what is going on. If you understand these points, then you will be illumined. And uh, nobody else talks about topics like this, but they should be. But they don't because they're idiots. They don't know any damn better. Ignorance is bliss. Until it bites you in the ass. <laughs>